This exercise is called Inventors versus Entrepreneurs. It's helpful if you've got students who love the products that they are building more than the problems their customers want to solve. So if you have students who are really in love with you know, kind of apps or the thing they want to build and aren't paying enough attention to the problems their customers want to solve, this will give your students an experience to understand why it's so important to prioritize customer problems. You start by contrasting inventors with entrepreneurs, where you explain inventors are people who build amazing things, whereas entrepreneurs are people who build amazing things that people actually buy. It can be helpful to have a couple examples to drive this point home. One great example I like to use, Google Glass. Incredible technology, amazing computing power packed into a set of glasses. Surf the web, take pictures, take video. Amazing invention, awful business. Uh, so your students are going to want to know, you know, how do I figure out whether I'm on a path to inventing something or whether I'm on the path of entrepreneurship, of building something that people will actually buy. To help them understand that, you're going to play a game with them. So tell them, we're going to play a game and I want you to pair up to play this game. Once they're in their pairs, you're going to let them know the winning pair of today's game is going to get their choice of prizes. And then you're going to tell them, if you win the game today, you, have, you can win this $40 million lottery ticket. So you can actually buy a lottery ticket before the class. Um, it needs to be good for a drawing that's after your class. And you're going to tell them this lottery ticket is worth a shot at $40 million. You buy one of the mega millions of the Powerball lottery tickets. So this can be your prize if you guys win. Or you can choose a dime. So you're going to bring in a dime as well. And you're going to say, I want it to be clear. Before you decide which prize you, you want, I want you to know that once you take into account the odds of winning the lottery and the tax obligations, the lottery ticket is actually worth less money than the dime. The lottery ticket's worth nine cents, where the dime is worth obviously 10 cents. So objectively speaking, the dime is worth more money than the lottery ticket. Of course, the dime will never be worth a shot at $40 million, but it's your choice. Which one do you guys want if you win? So give them 30 seconds to talk with their partner about which prize they want if they win the game and why. After that time is up, ask them to raise their hands if they want the dime. Virtually no one will raise their hands for the dime. Then you say, all right, raise your hand if your team chose the lottery ticket as your prize. Everyone's hands will shoot up. And then tell them, I want you to keep your hands up and I want you to look around the room. And I want you to ask yourself, why is it that the less valuable lottery ticket is more appealing to so many people? And then tell them, actually, this is, the answer to this question is going to determine the winner of the game today. I want you to hypothesize, why is it that the less valuable lottery ticket is more appealing than the dime? Take a minute. Talk amongst yourselves and see if you can figure out um, a hypothesis uh, that answers this question. So you give them a minute. After that minute, you solicit their hypotheses. Uh, and they're going to say things like, well, the, uh, the dime is worthless. They're going to say the lottery ticket is exciting, that it has hope, potential. Um, so what I recommend you do is as they are offering their hypotheses. You don't want to comment on which ones are right or wrong, but you may just want to emphasize and repeat some words, especially as they relate to emotions like hope, joy, fantasy. Um, yeah, th those sort of things that come up, anything that has to do with emotions, re-emphasize those and then say, okay, great. So we have our hypotheses now to determine which hypothesis is most accurate. We're going to test those hypotheses. And so you're going to have your students go through a couple of different exercises. Um, those exercises are going to detail some research from Dr. Shiv at Stanford and Dr. DiMaggio at USC. And the end result of introducing this research is that they will drive home the point of this exercise, the key takeaway. And that is customer decisions are largely influenced by emotions. It's why you can have an objectively amazing product like Google Glass and have it be a complete failure. Because no one wants to be this guy. 
uh, as amazing as the tech may be, no one wants to feel like a glass hole walking around. And that's why this product wasn't successful. It's also why something as simple as a lottery ticket has so much more value than its monetary objective value. In fact, that's why it sells for 20 times its objective value. It's because a lottery ticket, it's not just a piece of paper or a chance to win $40 million. It's a physical representation of a positive emotional experience. Just holding this enables the owner to fantasize about a world where money is no object, where they can dream about having anything they want and all the stress of seeking money is dissolved. So that's the power of this exercise. It gives your students a personal, real chance to understand why customers don't actually buy dimes. They don't want the product. They don't want the objective feature. What they want is an emotional experience. They want a resolution to their problems. So give this exercise a shot. Like you said, it'll give your students something personal they can connect with to understand why it is they need to focus on their customers' problems and emotions more than the product. You will also have the added benefit of getting a tool that you can leverage throughout your course. Whenever you see your students struggling to connect with their customers' problems, you can simply ask them, are you trying to sell a lottery ticket or a dime? Now, we hope you give this lesson plan a shot. We're really excited about it. We're really proud of it. It's part of our um, experiential entrepreneurship curriculum exec. It also won the Excellence in uh, Entrepreneurship Exercises Award at USASB. So give it a shot. Let us know how it goes, and we'll see you on the other side.